It's no secret that our right to vote is the foundation of our American democracy. But sometimes the process can feel overwhelming or unsafe. That's where Vote Without Fear comes in. Whether you're voting for the first time or the 10th time, this platform has everything you need to feel confident and informed. From where to vote, how to vote safely, and what to expect at the polls, voting is your voice. And with Vote Without Fear, you can use it without hesitation. Visit votewithoutfear.com today and take the first step towards secure, empowered voting. Remember, it's your vote, and you deserve to vote without fear. That's votewithoutfear.com. Welcome back to A Fresh Story, the podcast where we have conversations about brave decisions to start over again. I'm Olivia. And I'm Jenny. And we're so glad you're here today. We are here today with somebody very special I was excited to bring in at the last moment before this election because it is an issue that is near and dear to my heart. We are here with Luba Gretchen Shirley, and you are the founder of Vote Mama, which is really an important organization for so many reasons, as we'll get into. But I'm going to have you introduce yourself for a second and talk to us about what Vote Mama is. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. We're heading into GRTV weekend. Um, so I'm Luba Gretchen Shirley. I am a mom of three. I ran for Congress um, after after Trump was elected in 2016. It was my way of dealing with the anxiety of every executive order that came out. Um, I did not plan on running for Congress. I was nursing two very small children at the time. And I jumped into that race as a mom with two little kids with no childcare. My mom was teaching at the time, is thankfully retired now, but she would come home every day at 3.30 and watch my kids. But I had two babies with me on the campaign trail every day. During that campaign, I petitioned the Federal Election Commission and asked if I could use some of the funds that I was raising for childcare And everyone said it was political suicide. Do not do this. You'll be attacked for being a mom. You'll be attacked for being a woman. Shockingly, that was a bipartisan, unanimous decision, and it changed the way that federal candidates run for office. But that that sentiment of don't do it, you're going to be attacked for being a mom and a woman was true. And I was attacked throughout my campaign for having my kids with me, for using them as political props if they were just with me. And my experience running for Congress really launched it it prompted me to launch Vote Mama. I remember the days, you know, I cried for about a day. And then the next second I was like, but I have $10,000 left in my campaign account. What am I going to do with it? And I launched our Packside Verse to support Democratic moms running from school board to Senate across the country. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be a safe place where you could really talk about what is going on in your campaign, how hard it is to juggle motherhood and campaign life, and to really give moms the support that they need to build that mama's network. The old boys network is alive and well, and I want to build a mama's network. So I launched our pack side first and then quickly realized that there's only so much you can do to support these moms when they already are running. You need to actually break down the structural barriers that hold them back. So launched our foundation and our lobby, and we have been working to break the structural barriers that moms face when they run and serve. There are so many that you don't even realize, and we'll get into that during our Mm -hmm. conversation. But if we want to change our policies, we have to change our policymakers. But -hmm. the only way to change our policymakers is to change the political system. And that's what we're doing at Vote Mama. Mm, Small task. Just a small task. Just a tiny one. Um, (laughs) I have so many questions for you. You know, I think I'm a mom of two and I've always been politically active, but it would never have dawned on me in a million years to run for something, right? I feel like there is so much on purpose, right? (laughs) In parentheses, uh, confusion about how to run, who can run, what to run for. Is that something that Vote Mama will help? Like, let's say you have me, right? I'm a political person. I've done all this political work this election season. And I'm thinking, okay, well, how am I going to continue to make change for the next four years? Could I come to you and say, how can we do this? Do you support women in that way? So we support women who are wanting to get politically active, who want to build their political power. So 
we don't offer a training program or something like that for women yep. who are thinking of running for office. But there are a million organizations that do run for something, in particular, yep. for our partners. They're the organization. Okay. King of running for something, they're the organization to go to who will give you advice on, you know, put your address in and they'll literally tell you what seats you can run for. And I love working yeah. with that. Their organization is great for that. On our PAC side, we're the organization you come to when you're running for office. Got it. Okay. And you've launched your campaign and you need to be endorsed. You need coaching. You need support. You need financial help. You need, you know, us to help get your word out about why you're running and what you're doing. That's where Vote Mama PAC steps in. And it's interesting because in the beginning, I remember thinking I wanted to do that and I Mm -hmm. wanted to help train women, but I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. There are so many, you know, Vote Run Lead trains women, run for something will help you run for something. Literally, Mm -hmm. it's in the name. And then Vote Mama is normalizing what it looks like to run and serve as a mom. And we're supporting the candidates once they step up. Right. Their campaign. You're supporting their campaign, right? I've been watching, um, to go to sleep before bed, I've been watching Veep, which is an amazing show. And, you know, it addresses a lot of those topics, right? Running as a mom. And, you know, I thought something you said before was very interesting, how you are perceived as maybe using your children as political props, whereas men have been doing that since uh, forever. Men actually do use their kids as political props. And they use other people's children when they don't have their own. Yeah, and animals and, and all, all good things there, plants. How did you figure all this out? Like, that's what I always want to know. Like, when, when I talk to women who are active change makers and you are, you are currently changing the world with, you know, giving women this platform and this support, right? Really, you're empowering women to get their, their voices out there in this much bigger way. I love that you said it's from school board to Senate because that, that gives me chills. Like, it truly does. How did, the, how did you figure all this out while also raising three kids? <laughs> um, I'm going to start before my campaign. Um, I feel like anybody who's paying attention knows how bad our policies are, but until they affect you immediately, until you feel that you know visceral impact of how bad our policies are, it's this theoretic you know conversation. I knew we didn't have paid family leave. I knew childcare was a completely broken system in this country. When I had my first child. I was working full time. I was finishing my MBA and I had this baby and I had no paid family leave. I was a director of a research institute at Mm. New York University and I didn't have paid family leave. And I was two months shy of being there to have six weeks of paid family leave. Mm. And I couldn't get off of any childcare wait lists. I literally remember meeting a woman who put her name on the wait list for three years down the road because she knew her boyfriend was about to propose to her. Oh my God. And I was six months pregnant. I never made it off the wait lists. So in that moment, I realized just how badly our policies are failing women and kids in this country. And then I ran for Congress out of sheer anger that Donald Trump was elected, that my representative had been there since I was 12, that he had voted to take health care away from 74,000 people in our district. He had voted to defund Planned Parenthood 17 mm-hmm. times. I mean, it was just yeah. mama anger. Yep. And I had these two small kids, and I didn't want them growing up in a country where our president joked about sexually assaulting women. Not even joked, boasted about sexually assaulting mm-hmm. women. And I ran for Congress and any single time, and it happened every time, anytime I talked about childcare or paid family leave, someone would always say, you really should ignore the women's issues and stick to the bread and butter issues. Mm. And that was a wake-up call to me because we lose over $120 billion a year in economic activity because of the lack of childcare. There is no more basic bread and butter issue that this country faces, and moms get that. Moms understand that. We don't have enough people in office at the decision-making table who get that at a visceral level. And talking to people during my campaign is when I really got how difficult people thought running for office was. It is difficult. I will give you that. But I will also tell you the biggest thing that I learned from my campaign, I remember going into this thinking, all Congress members are really smart. Even if I disagree with them, they're smart and they mm-hmm. understand the policies. And I realized that that's just not true. I debated yeah. somebody who had been in office since I was a kid five times. And every time I debated him, I realized just how little he knew about the policy and how much he said mm. hot air. And I realized, you know what? If, if this is what this is, I know the issues. I care about the issues. I'm talking to people in my community every day. I, if I can run, so many more people can run. It's really, it's meant to look harder than it is. Yeah. It takes a lot of time, but you can run for office as long as you can read and you can care. That's it. You care and you can read and you can run. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's really when I realized it kind of all came together just 
there's a very real reason that our policies are failing women and kids. And it's frankly because our political system was designed for wealthy, older, white, land-owning men because it was designed by them. Yes. Yeah. I, I pulled up the lyrics to the song Let Mama Vote. Uh, let mother vote. I'm sorry from Soft's musical, and I, I don't know if I, if I everybody should listen to this, but there's some really great lyrics here. I'm just going to read one of them. We nurture every family just as we're meant to do, so won't you let us nurture the nation too? And I just I love that because, like you said, moms are the core of everything, mm-hmm. right? We're at the pulse of every single thing that's happening, and we multitask like superwomen, right? So why is it that we pretend that we can't also go into running for all of these different positions? You know, and I, I guess my question for you is we are at the precipice of this huge, monumental, hopefully very exciting election, right? Knock on a lot of wood. <laughs> and either way, right? Why do we need moms in power? Why do we need moms in power? Because we are the only industrialized country without paid family leave. Child care costs more than college in many states. Half, more than half of America lives in a child care desert. We're 27th in education globally. We're 27th in healthcare globally. Uh, we have the worst maternal mortality rate in the industrialized world. It is literally the most dangerous place to give birth mm-hmm. and be born in in the industrialized world. Yeah. And we now don't have reproductive rights. We are now seeing every day on the news, there are more and more stories. People are dying. Women are yep. dying because we don't have access to reproductive health care. And we need moms in office because when you elect a mother, you change the priorities at the decision-making table. Moms statistically will introduce more legislation, and that legislation has to do with reproductive rights, with education, with child care, with health care. You know, I used to work in international development before I ran for Congress. Mm -hmm. And there are so many studies that show when you give money to the mother of the family, when you give money to women in their community, they invest in their community. They make Mm -hmm. their community better. That money actually does trickle down to the children. Mm. And when you give money to men, they go out and gamble or spend it on drinks. And that's, you know, there are so many studies that show this just in global development and working in microfinance. And then when you, when you work in politics, women invest and really spend their time trying to uplift their community. And we see it time and again, you know, during the pandemic, there was this massive bailout of the airline industry, $60 billion, and they wouldn't bail out the childcare industry. It was the moms in Congress that fought back and made sure that we bailed out the childcare industry. And that was the largest investment in childcare that our country has ever seen. Wow. We need more moms in office because policies will completely shift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it reminds me, it's related, but not related. My sons and I love to watch Jeopardy together. Mm -hmm. And I, we watched like every night for a long time and I would, I'm a sociologist at heart. So I would, every night I would wonder, well, why does, why does it feel like a lot of men are winning Jeopardy? Right. And then I Googled it and there was actually a response, which is that when men play game shows, it's fake money to them not real money. So they take higher risks for their money. So they'll do double jeopardy. They'll do this, that. When women play game shows, it's real money to them because they've already spent it on things in their head for their family. And so isn't that fascinating? So they will not take the risk for double jeopardy. They won't risk it all. They won't do this or that because it's they don't want to lose that money. Yeah. And so I just find that so fascinating. So what is Vote Mama doing this election season? What are they going to be doing moving forward? And how can we support Vote Mama? Yeah. So we have endorsed as our largest cohort ever over 200 Democratic mamas running from school board to Senate. Beautiful. We have five red to blue candidates right now. Janelle Bynum in Oregon, Chris, Chris McDonald Rivet in Michigan, uh, Laura Gillen on Long Island in New York, mm-hmm. Doc in Florida, and Missy Cotter Smalsell in Virginia. Those are our four, five red to blue candidates right now. We have also targeted four states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Arizona, where we have almost full slates of Democratic mamas running for those state seats. Arizona is the closest state in the country to flipping. Um, We need two seats in each chamber to get a trifecta. That is huge. Michigan, we need to protect the majority in the House. We only have a one-seat majority, and it was won by 1,425 votes. So we need to make sure that we protect that because for the first time in nearly my entire life, they've had a Democratic trifecta, and they've been able to pass so much just common sense, really helpful legislation. Um, You know, talking about 
policies that are failing kids in this country, guns are the leading cause of death for American children. And Michigan was able to pass common sense gun legislation to protect kids, to protect everyone in their yeah. community. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we maintain that majority. We've got we've got candidates across the country in 38 states that we've endorsed. So we are funding our candidates. We are helping with GOTV efforts. We are getting them. We actually have a podcast lab, not a podcast. I'm on a podcast. We have an Insta Live later that Jody Sweet. Oh, um, I love Jody Sweeten. Jody is amazing. So she's actually interviewing um, Janelle Bynum and Missy Cotter Smalls. Yep, amazing. So we are really we're trying to get our mamas out there as much as possible um, and give them as much support. And really, when I said the Mamas Network earlier, I will tell you, running for office, especially as a mom, it's really isolating. You are working eighteen hours a day, seven days a week, while taking care of your family. And to have other moms who are in the moment doing it right now, or who have done it in the past, that support. It's it. I can't even put a price on it. It is so critical, mm. and that's really what we're doing. Is we're putting our mamas in touch with each other. We're giving them that network where they can really yeah. talk about what it's like. Because the biggest supporters to me when I ran were the moms who had done it before: Elizabeth Warren, Kirsten Gillibrand, Grace Mang. Like mm-hmm. they were the ones you could have real conversations with about how hard it is to juggle motherhood in politics. And we wanted to provide that same support to moms running across the country. You know, when I talk to women like you who are incredibly intelligent and passionate about what you're doing. My question is, were you like this as a child? Where did this come from? Yes, I was like this as a child. I was a pain in the ass. As a I'm still a pain in the ass. My very first time doing anything political, I was three years old. Um, my mom actually took me to my local county legislator's office and we were fighting. They were putting a, a new, building a nuclear power plant off the shore of Long Island. And that was my that was my very first political activity. So I have been, you know, I've been doing this forever. When when Bush, uh, you know, attacked Iraq, I created a student group called Students to Oppose Preemption. I was, yeah. I, I have been obsessed with politics forever. All right, I'm going to tell you this ridiculous story. When I was, what, 12 or 13 and Clinton was running, I had a green marble notebook where I cut out um, articles about their election and I put it into this green marble notebook. And when I met Hillary Clinton for the first time, I told her about oh, the green marble man. notebook and it was ridiculous. Um, but she she enjoyed it. But it's funny. My daughter is running for student council right now. She wrote her speech and she showed it to me. And the things that she's saying in this, she literally was talking about changes that she wants to see in the school. And she said, we need a better anti-bullying policy because there have been racist comments made at school that she doesn't feel are being addressed. And she's 10. And I'm like, yes, thank you for speaking up. Thank you for having the courage. She has grown up watching me, you know, go to press, yeah. go to meetings, run for Congress, start this organization, support moms across the country. She talks to some of these mamas regularly. So it's normal to her. Yep. Speaking up and running for office is just what she's grown up with. Yeah. And that's that's another thing that's another huge benefit for having moms in office is that our kids think that that's the norm and they will learn to use their voices and speak up when they think that there's something wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so funny. I had the similar experience because what we've been working on this whole election cycle is reminding people they don't have to tell anyone who they voted for. And then my son, who's 11, came home and said, Mom, all the boys were talking at school about who they're voting for. And I was asked who I'm voting for. And I said, I don't have to tell you that it's my business. And I like burst into tears. I'm like, see, I told you, you know, so I, I love that modeling. And you know what, I feel like you're just at the beginning of your journey. And it's so um admirable that, you know, you are, you know, Notice that the that women want to do this, and they need the support system. They need the financial. They need they need the support, and you are literally creating a, a new world for us all by building this network of women, and that's incredible. And I just hope that you take some time, sometimes, to recognize how beautiful that is. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, what one of the things really it's it's not when you're trying to convince moms to run you can give them all of this support but if you're not actually breaking the structural barriers so one of the things that we've been doing on the foundation side we work to now pass campaign funds for child care for state and local candidates in 36 states and DC we're now tackling things like uh, paid family leave for state legislators virtual voting proxy voting um something as simple as having a changing table or a pumping or yeah. in the capital having on-site child care and paying a livable wage. Most people don't realize that there are only four states that pay their legislators a livable wage. So it becomes this position for independently wealthy people. We need to change that system, yeah. break those structural barriers so that more moms do feel that they can step up and run. Not having votes scheduled you know, in the middle of the night. Mm. Because you can find childcare in the middle of the mm-hmm. night. Having a reasonable schedule 
all of those shifts and those changes will make it easier for more moms to run. Are you saying this wild notion that if we make the world easier for moms to run, then maybe the world will run in a little bit of a better way? Yes. Exactly. What a weird notion that is. Like that summary. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in learning more? Yes. Follow us on Instagram at Vote Mama Lobby. Go to our PAC website at votemamapac.org. If you want to learn more about our structural work and our legislation, go to votemamafoundation.org. And please come get involved. We've got GOTV going on all weekend. We've got over 200 candidates that we've endorsed. There's so much to do. But Vote Mama Lobby on Instagram, you can find so much information there and have you can find the links to everywhere you want to go. Well, please come back anytime to chat because this is such an important conversation. And just I hope you take a little time to rest and have a little self-care during all of this because moms need that too. <laughs> we try. <laughs> we do. We try. <laughs> Thank you so much, Luma. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode. A Fresh Story podcast is produced by Fresh Starts Registry, the first and only platform for everything you need to begin again, from home items to hype team and everything in between. You can learn more and read today's show notes at afreshstory.com. Are you ready to use your vote? Whether it's your first time or you've done it before, Vote Without Fear is here to help you feel prepared and safe every step of the way. From understanding how to vote securely to knowing where your nearest polling location is, this platform has all of the information you need. Don't let uncertainty hold you back. Your voice matters. Head to votewithoutfear.com and make sure that you're ready to vote with confidence and peace of mind. Remember, it's your vote, and you deserve to vote without fear. That's votewithoutfear.com.